Well, sticking with pharma, Recursion Pharmaceuticals getting a pop today. The biotech company announcing guidance on seven clinical readouts at its investor day, as well as updates on its partnership with Bayer. NVIDIA is also a partner and an investor. CEO Jensen Huang will be speaking later at today's event. Joining us now in an exclusive interview, Recursion Pharmaceutical CEO Chris Gibson. Chris, it's great to have you back on the show. You joined us almost a year ago, last July, when it was announced that NVIDIA was going to be making a $50 million investment into the company. You were going to be working with the company. Shares soared in response to that announcement. As we flash forward here to your investor day today, walk me through some of these key announcements that you made today and why this is an inflection point. Well, Morgan and John, thanks for having me on. It's great to be back. Yeah, we have given updates today around our pipeline, our partnerships, and our platform. On the pipeline side, we've given guidance that we're going to be giving seven readouts in the next 18 months in our clinical programs. Five of those will be efficacy readouts, which is what everybody's going to be looking for from recursion. On the partnership side, we announced that Bayer, one of our close partners, is actually going to be using one of our LLM software tools called Low as part of the infrastructure for our partnership. And I think this really represents one of the first times a large pharmaceutical company is going to be adopting these kinds of tools, uh, these AI tools, into the way they discover and develop medicines together with us. And then, as you mentioned, Jensen is going to be joining us. They've been an incredible partner uh, for the last year and even before. Uh, and we just announced a few weeks ago that we are now operating the fastest supercomputer in all of biopharma, mm. BioHive 2. NVIDIA was a huge part of that. And he's going to be joining me on stage here in Salt Lake City in just a few minutes so we can talk to investors and analysts about how critical it is to bring together both tech and bio for this next generation of biopharma. And we have so many conversations on the show about the fact that uh, biotech is really sort of one of the first real areas where you're going to see some of these new generative AI applications realized. Whether it's the supercomputer or some of the other products you have, this partnership with Bear, for example, what does it do? What's the value proposition and what does it realize being able to have these applications in the mix? So we've been able to demonstrate that using these tools, we can roughly 3x the speed uh, of discovering and developing medicines towards the clinic and dramatically reduce the cost. So we're really scaling and making discovering and developing medicines more efficient. But ultimately, the most important lever is going to be improving the probability of success. Because as we talked about last time, Morgan and John, 90% of drugs that go into clinical trials today fail. And that's despite incredible scientists dedicating their entire career to advancing these medicines. And it's because biology is so complex. And machine learning and AI are the right tools when you bring the right data and the right compute to bear to help us make sense and really decode biology. And when we do that, we think over the coming decade, recursion and companies like us will be able to demonstrate an increase in the probability of success. And that's ultimately the lever uh, that everybody wants to see pulled. But Chris, it's really the jury's still out, right? Because we're talking about sort of money balling uh, biopharma, like being able to get a measurably better result, bang for the buck, using AI. And we're still not clear whether and how that actually emerges, right? Absolutely, and that's why we're here running the experiment. We think somebody's got to go first. Somebody's got to take these medicines into the clinic. And we're going to have successes and we're going to have failures. But ultimately, we're going to learn from both. And I think when you look back at a company like Recursion in five or 10 years, it's going to look like this was all so obvious. It was going to look like this was the way it was always supposed to go. But somebody's got to be first. Somebody's got to pioneer. And we feel like we're the company that's doing that for this new tech bio space. So what's the greater opportunity for you here in the near to medium term? Is it your own pipeline where you're using these technologies uh, to, to make your own drug discoveries, or is it basically industrializing this process for other companies? Well, I think both, actually, Morgan. So we have these seven programs that are going to read out over the next 18 months, but all of those are focused in relatively small areas of biology. They'll affect hundreds of thousands of patients, much like the Alnylam program that you just talked about. And that's really important. But with Roche Genentech, with Bayer, we're going after some of the largest, most intractable areas of biology, things like neuroscience, where there have been failure after failure over the past decade. And so we think over the medium to longer term, those partnerships might have a bigger impact on society. But in the near term, our pipeline is going to help us prove that this kind of platform is ultimately something that people are going to want to see taken forward into this uh, industry broadly.